Okay, and welcome to the Franchise Freedom Podcast. I'm your host, Giuseppe Grammatico, your franchise guide. Uh, Happy New Year to all that uh, that have been listening in and uh, very excited uh, to bring back my good friend, Henry Lopez. Henry is a good friend of mine, Um, actually been on the show twice, I I believe now. This is the second appearance on the show. And just a little bit of background on Henry. Henry is a serial entrepreneur, small business coach, and host of the top rated The How of Business podcast. Highly recommend the show. Been on there a few times and uh, always learning something new every time I'm on the show. So Henry, welcome uh, help, welcome to the show. Excited to be here, Giuseppe. Thanks for having me back on. So uh, yeah, ha- happy new year. Um, Same th- to you. The shows have, g- have gone great. I've, I've actually received quite a bit of uh, a feedback. I always encourage people, if they have questions, if they like a certain episode or want to discuss a certain topic to... Uh, to write email message us. So uh, happy to have you on the show again. So um, for the, for those listening in for the first time, maybe they didn't hear the, the, the first show, give the audience maybe a little bit of a, uh, of your background before we, uh, we dive in today. Sure. So at the highest level, I've, I've had the opportunity to be part of about 11 or 12 businesses now since my first business back in 1991, which I did while I kept my day job. I had a partner who ran it full time. We paid him a salary. It was a, a local pizza franchise. Uh, but it wasn't until the early 2000s where I was able to finally quit my day job and f- focus full time on business ownership. So I've had a very diverse uh, experience with businesses that really have not been interrelated. It's just been opportunistic from owning a yogurt, uh, self serve yogurt restaurant to the car wash business to I'm a minority partner in a franchise now that offers co working spaces. So, and then I also got into coaching and consulting, uh, obviously as a business, but also because I just love, I love talking about business. I can talk about business all day long as my wife will attest to. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so that briefly at a high level is my background. I started before I got into, into business ownership. I started as a computer programmer and then went into sales and marketing throughout most of the nineties. And so that's where I'm at now. So I actively own a couple of businesses and I do, as you mentioned, coaching and consultant consulting and then I host the how of business that's awesome actually I, I learned something new on every show I didn't I didn't <laughs> realize you were in computer programming yeah um, I was as well were uh, you really couple couple years in college and mm. loved the idea of being able to program then I, I got to sit down in a computer lab to program and realize that's not for me. I have no <laughs> idea what I'm doing, and no. I can't. I I have answered my pants. I have I have to move around and talk to people. So well, I get that part of it, and that's why eventually I went into sales because that way it wasn't sitting in a cubicle all day coding back then. Now I'll date myself. I programmed in COBOL, which mm-hmm. you know young people now are like, "What is that?" Right. And the languages that they code in now those those are way over my head. So, but back then. I could do it. And it was the analytical side of me that really came to play when I was coding because I am terrible at math, which is often what you would think programmer math go hand in hand, but that was not my case. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. And, it's, and, and I, I also jumped into sales. So we had, we had a similar path, fina- financial sal- uh, sales. So um, yeah, just, it was the complete opposite. I feel programmed to sales. I, I don't know. You know, you, you go to college, you try to figure out what you want to study. My, my parents still, uh, are like, you know, you started with computer programming. How'd you get into business? So it's this long lengthy conversation. So, um, very interesting stuff. So, um, so for, for today, you know, we, we covered quite a bit in the last show and I, I wanted to, cover some topics. And these topics, I, um, you know, if you've looked at some of my posts in the past, and this is towards uh, around the holidays, um, started uh, following uh, or reading a book, they ask you answer. I think we've talked mm, about that. Yeah, you uh, told me before. about that book. Yeah. And I've dedicated my, my market, I decided to take my marketing, um, uh, take it on full force, right? Handle it. And instead of me complicating things and figuring out what my audience, what Someone that is thinking about business ownership wants to know. I'm just flat out asking, what are your questions? What are your concerns? And let's tackle them. And let's tackle them at length because we get a lot of the similar questions. I'm sure when you, you know, work, even working with uh, your coaching clients, a lot of, I'm not saying everyone's situation is the same, but we're getting a lot of the same stuff. So, Absolutely. how do we, 
how do we record, take advantage and, and have a great conversation of this to be able to share with a, a larger audience? So, uh, so that was, so, so I kind of went back and, and looked at questions. Did we, did we address this? Did we kind of cover this? So there, there are two, two topics. And, um, you know, one of these was, was a great idea on your end. We're talking about delivering, um, remarkable customer experience and, and, and what that is. And, Another topic, which uh, maybe we'll we'll kick it off, uh, is is a franchise business a good fit for an entrepreneur? So maybe we'll flip right. them around and, and we'll okay. cover that. Sure. So, you know, one of the the questions I, I get asked, and it's sometimes I laugh about it, but it, it's a, it's a topic we we like to cover. Um, is there's this whole thing of labels? There's this whole thing mm-hmm. of, you know, are you an entrepreneur? Or are you a business owner? Um, and people, I think, there's not, th- th- there's differences, right? If you're a, a one man consultant versus a multi million dollar business with employees and, and multiple systems in place, mm-hmm. and there's that conversation. But I, I say at the end of the day, whatever you want to label label it or call it, if it's a franchise, non franchise, a uh, consulting b- business ownership, it is a vehicle, right? just like anything else that is getting you to where you want to be. So if that means stock trading, investing, franchise ownership, business ownership, a one man consulting operation, it is a vehicle simply to get you there. Um, And that's something that we've talked about briefly. We haven't really talked at at length. So what are your thoughts on that? Because ultimately you can call it whatever you want. If that's going to make you happy, um, what are, what are your thoughts on that? I know it's kind of deviating a little bit here, but no, yeah, no, and there's a lot in there, and I, I think you're spot on. And I do believe there is a difference between the, the the term entrepreneurship and business ownership, but they can also be the same thing. And we'll talk more about that. But to your point of it's a vehicle, I'm I'm right on with that. I used to I used to I actually use that term. What is the vehicle that's going to get you to achieve your long term goals? Right. And the way that I that I look at exactly what you're saying, Giuseppe, is we have to ask ourselves before we get into a business, and then even sometimes even most importantly after we're in a business, because that's when the reality sets in, is this serving my ultimate purpose? Is this helping me accomplish my vision for my life? If not, then I, I got to rethink. I may need to pivot. I may need to get out of that business. Mm-hmm. I may not, should not be able to get into the business. But yes, that is the ultimate thing. You can call it your why, your vision, whatever you might want to term it. But without that A, it's very hard to get through the difficult times of business ownership, mm-hmm. which you will encounter. And B, it's like you're not going to be happy because it's not satisfying or helping you get to where you want to go. Now, the thing that you know we could talk about for hours as well is defining that. Where, where is it that you want to go? Right. And does this business or business concept that you're considering get you there? Uh, right quickly on entrepreneurship and business ownership, I use those terms interchangeably, especially when I when I talk on my show. But the difference is, and the thing I think is that people think that maybe one or the other is better. No, it's to your point. What fits for you, mm-hmm. your personality, and what you're looking to get out of this opportunity, out of this vehicle, and I think that's what's most important. I love that. That's uh, that. That's exactly it. I think everyone is looking for the similar answer, right? Mm-hmm. Like back in my investment days, what is the best investment? And uh, and people would spew, oh, you should buy <laughs> this fund or that managed account or, or, or this uh, stock. But what happened to the question of what are your goals in life? How right. old are you? Are you married? What's your risk tolerance, right? You know, buy some penny stocks. Not that I would ever recommend that, but <laughs> it's it. There's never this one size fits all, which I feel no. like people are always looking for that one answer. Yeah. And when people ask me, and sometimes they get annoyed at me, and and I I always bring it up on the show, and I jokingly say, "What's the best franchise?" I always say, "Or best business." Yeah. It depends. It depends. It's never yeah. changed. It's never changed. I know it's frustrating years. because because <laughs> I get it. I've been there where I would love to call you, Uncle Giuseppe, and say, "Hey, what do I? What should I do?" Well, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Well, the difference is obviously we we know one another, but for someone yes, that, that's just listening to the show and what's what's the uh, the best franchise, and it says, well, what are you looking for? Because my big my big thing is it's always for the long term of business, right? You, you have to build it. If it's a franchise or not, it's got to be built. And I always say it's going to take time. So, what can make you a ton of money the first couple years versus the long term? They may be two different. 
uh, types of businesses, ultimately, what is going to be sustainable? If you're going to be miserable, no matter how good that system is, you're right. going to go down in flames with, with that business if you don't have maybe the right people in place, if you're not backing off. If you're, if you're miserable in the business, it, it's going to come through. Oh yeah, um, it's 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 that's no place to be. Go, go get a job. That's just not where you want to be. Um, and then to that point, you know that that's the one of the huge advantages of bringing on someone like you as a consultant, especially since it doesn't cost me anything. You just most recently helped me with making a decision on a on a franchise, and you were patient with guiding me through that process. And in the end, I did not pull the trigger on on the one that I had narrowed it down to, the one franchise opportunity. Because I just discovered that it wasn't a fit for me. But if I hadn't had you there to kind of guide me through that process as an independent third party on my side, right. then it might, I maybe, I don't know, maybe I would have forced the issue. Maybe I would have been even more confused. And so that's why it's so critical to get that help. Absolutely. Yeah. And, 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 and another topic on there is when we talk about consulting and, and, and business coaching, um, one last thing uh, on that topic is that there's this misconception. Well, if I own that franchise, so if you did pull the trigger, assuming you're not a coach, right? You're just, you pull the trigger, ended up uh, investing in that franchise, the franchisor, the franchise company will support you, but, but that doesn't take the place of saying, okay, well, they're also going to be my coach. There's going to be coaching right. and advice given. Uh, but, uh, just for everyone listening in, Henry is my go-to, uh, for, Anyone looking for additional co coaching, accountability, looking to, um, you know, get their business to the, to the next level. So um, for everyone listening in, a franchise does offer you support. You, you may be assigned a coach, whether that's virtual or in person or whatever that may be. But uh, I also, owning franchises, had hired coaches in the past to really take my business and working directly with me because... It's not just business. There's personal, right? Absolutely. I don't. I don't believe in personal. I mean, they, they call them life coaches, business coaches. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as, as as a business coach, just business and just life, because it's gonna, you know, bleed it's inter in. It's intertwined. Yep. It's in, in, intertwined. So if you're working on the business twenty four seven, it's gonna hurt your personal life, and vice versa. So mm -hmm. I highly recommend. We're gonna put all of Henry's information. We'll talk about uh, best ways to reach you. So thank you. So. So Henry, Henry, and I spoke. I said, Henry, you know, we we talked quite a bit. Uh, so that was kind of one of the topics. But we we talked quite a bit. You had taken a look at at some recent shows and, and shows we've done in the past. This is, uh, I believe, number eighty two. So we're getting wow. to that hundred mark. I got I got a long ways to catch up to you. So we're <laughs> well, I've been at it for for a number of years, but yeah, <laughs> we're approaching uh, yeah year year two uh, coming up here in the That's wonderful in the next couple months. So time uh, time flies. They say. A show doesn't usually pass ep eight episodes, so we we made it. <laughs> You're way <laughs> right? past it, right? absolutely. So we both we both made it. So you know, so what one topic that you noticed there was, and 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 I've also received these questions, so it kind of worked out perfectly. Was how do we, you know, what what was missing? And one thing we haven't really talked about is a customer the the customer service experience. And what I mean by that is we talk about client acquisition and customer, you know, cu you know, customer service almost falls to the wayside. And I see a lot of that in businesses that I, that I've Gosh. worked with. Um, it could be something as simple as I need to call an electrician and that person doesn't call you back or they call you <laughs> back. There's no follow up or re return or, or to get a quote. It's like you have to contact them three times. And, you know, that customer service in my opinion, you know, after obtaining a new client, a new sale, whatever that, that case, you know, the case may be, is the way to keep them on, to keep them engaged, to keep them continuing to do business. You're, you're creating essentially that that relationship. And I, and I feel that that's where it falls to the wayside. Uh, would you would you agree with that? Or? Oh, yeah. I mean, and listen, Giuseppe, it's, it's amazing. I, I don't think we need to write another article or blog post about how valuable it is to maintain your current customer how most of your revenues come from that 20%, how repeat business is the most valuable business, how you're, re you know, all of that, right? We know that in business, that if we, we've we spent all of this effort and energy and money to acquire a client or a customer, and if we keep them, we know how valuable that is. And yet we see so many organizations that just don't execute on this. 
So I have a really strong philosophy about it because it's important to me, like you mentioned. And I know it's because I'm getting older, but it just seems like customer service is deteriorating Mm -hmm. or I'm getting older or both. (laughs) So, But, you know, for me, for me, it all started with my experiences growing up, going to Disney World. I grew up in South Florida. And so we started going to Disney World in 71, 72, I think, when it opened. And I have lost count of how many times I've been there. And my daughter is a big Disney fan. Mm. And one of the things that I've always appreciated and admired, especially as I got older and became an adult and became a business owner, is the attention to detail, the attention to creating that customer experience on a consistent basis. That's the hard part, Mm -hmm. right? And that always fascinated me and inspired me. And, And here's the other thing for me when I create a business is I think, obviously, it's a representation of ourselves. We create this thing and we put it out into the world and hopefully people respond to it positively. But the way that I look at it is it represents me. So for an example, when you walked into my frozen yogurt restaurant, it represented my work. We, me and my partner created that. It's my work that I'm putting forth into the world. And so I want it to represent me to the best of its ability, right? Now, it's a for-profit business, don't get me wrong, but I understand that those things go hand in hand. So that's first and foremost. So for me, the very first thing and most important thing to achieving this ability to deliver remarkable customer or client experiences is it starts at the top. Mm -hmm. If you as the owner are not bought into the value of it and why you do it, then forget about it. Any you know posters right. with eagles on them or the employee of the month plaque doesn't do anything. That's just lipstick on a pig, right? You have to believe it in you as to why you do it because it's the right thing to do. Right Now, I am assuring you and just some people as well, and you don't have to do much digging to realize the financial benefits of providing a positive experience. But I think it comes from you should deliver it because that's how you want to be treated. And that's what you want to put forth into the world. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. And I w- I'm just hardwired that way. But I mean, at, at the end of the day, you, you want to do good work. And what happens? You do good work. We don't have to overcomplicate this, right? You no. answer the phone, you follow up. Um, when I had my other businesses, I said, it is inevitable. There, an issue will come up. Let's be honest. We are not perfect. If I Absolutely. told you we were perfect, I'd throw me out right now. Right. It's how we handle it. And that's our, our, our key differentiator. That's the value proposition. In the event there is an issue, this is, this is your one main point of contact, whether it's for billing, any type of issues, just one main point of contact. And then we would dispatch somebody, whatever, you know, depending on, on what business we were referring to, but yeah. they would dispatch somebody. And I think keeping it as simple, obviously you're going to build on that. And then the, the, there's emails and follow-up phone calls, but just having one point of contact that was attentive to you, that was able to answer your questions, address your concerns. Sometimes there was a misunderstanding or someone else took over the account and there was that, that learning curve to get them Uh, back up to speed. But I think that's huge. And what happens? Happy customer. So when you talked about financials, right, the kind of the the result of all that is they stay on because, okay, I'm I'm happy with the service. If there is an issue, instead of me looking to replace Giuseppe or or his company, let me bring it to his attention because there's that comfort level. But what's going to happen if someone looks to me and and I'm an electrician and Someone says, who do you recommend? Well, I'm going to recommend Giuseppe because I called him. He showed up. He did good work. I had an issue. He came back to fix it. So I think it just goes hand in hand. And uh, I just received, um, I know, and I know we're, we're talking about customer service, but this goes hand in hand with mm-hmm. referrals. Uh, and I forget the gentleman. I get an email from him every week. Uh, actually, here, Steve, Steve Gordon of the Unstoppable CEO podcast. And I always give him a plug because he was the, uh, his company was able to, to launch our podcast back in uh, 2020. He says that there's a 400% chance versus getting a cold lead, but that that referral will stay with you because someone else had referred you. They were happy with your service. So there's a 400% chance of, of um, uh, obtaining that, that new business. That's number one. And, and secondly, most businesses, and I'm kind of looking at the article right here, but mo- most businesses, 
know that and, and they'll say 60 to 70% of their business is referrals, yet they spend 20% of their time on customer service, improving customer service and referrals and 80% on cold outreach on Facebook and LinkedIn. So I, I right. found that pretty interesting that we, we, it is we have that data. <laughs> so I know it's there. The data is there. <laughs> you know, a couple of things. The, the gold is in the follow up, right? right? It, it, think about it this way. This opportunity that we have as small business owners compared to the big organizations, we all deal with them. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, most recently, my wife had to call our cellular company. Talk about an impersonal experience where you're on hold and you're pressing mm-hmm. buttons and you can't talk to anybody. What an incredible opportunity we have as small business owners to differentiate ourselves just on what you said. Answer the phone, follow up, follow through, make it easy for people to get help from us. It's not that complicated. And it's a huge opportunity for us to differentiate ourselves against, especially larger organizations. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's, it's, uh, I think we're, I think a lot of people overcomplicate it. So this is, some simple advice. I right now I'm I'm on my own as a consultant. I don't have employees, so um, you know I live and die by that. It's 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 the constant follow up, right. and and uh, that is a good point. It's it's uh it's easier to deliver it when it's just us. It does get harder when you have employees, but it can be done, and I've done it, and many people do it. And you exp- you know when you walk into establishment, you know restaurants are the easy example, but it applies to any type of business mm-hmm. where you have interactions with a client or a customer, uh, even in business to business, I think these things apply, but certainly in business to consumer, it really applies, but you can instill a culture in your company, even with hourly wage employees to have this focus on customer service. And there are companies out there, especially small businesses that are doing this and reaping the benefits of doing so. Yes. And, 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 and to add, you can just, even if you feel like you're providing the ultimate customer sh- uh, service and experience, I always ask and say, you know, is there anything, you know, w- whatever decision was made, was there anything that would have helped or mm-hmm. any recommendations? I'm, I'm always looking to kind of make the, the process easier. So sometimes, it, it, you know, one one project I'm working on that someone suggested is a a 20 minute video before our intro call to mm-hmm. give a general overview. So we dive right in on the first call, saying, "Okay, I have a general understanding. I know that there's no cost to the service. I know that you provide X, Y, and Z. You know, yada yada yada. So, and this is and these are the the four steps in the process. So that's something I'm working on to to deliver automatically when someone uh, books an appointment. So yeah, to, because what you're doing there is you're you're enhancing the overall experience that I have when I interact with you and your business, yeah. So I think and I you're think you're touching on there yeah. I have a six step process and step number 5 is listen and measure. Right. We have to as business owners and and our managers we need to empower them. We have to measure how we're doing in this area of customer satisfaction, customer experience. And we have to listen. We have to listen. And there's various ways we can listen. Reviews is one of them, but it's not the only one. Mm-hmm. And that is why as a business owner, always, Giuseppe, the closer you are to the client or the customer, especially if you've got employees, the more you're going to hear that valuable feedback. Yeah. Yes. Uh, 100%. You nailed it. And and for everyone listening in that, that has maybe a new business, um, I just, just a word of advice, something I've learned over the years, owning different businesses, completely different, you know, separate from one another is that don't get down on negative reviews. Obviously That's you right. want to address them. But, and the reason I say that is because what I've noticed, and this is something I've learned you don't learn this in school. You have to kind of learn this the hard way is that when people have a good experience, uh, maybe they, they, they had a great experience. They come back. So they figure, okay, you know that I had a good experience by me coming back to your establishment, right. whatever, whatever the business is, they may not write that review, but I've noticed that more people like to write negative reviews Absolutely. for whatever reason. And I don't know what the stat is, but I, this is just from experience talking to other owners that no, people no, like to vent. That's, that's been my experience as well. I, I'm not sure why that is, but and, you, well, everybody's a critic and the internet has amplified everybody's mm-hmm. ability to be the, you know, the critic that they always wanted to be. So it's very easy mm-hmm. for them to express it. And yes, that's, that's been the case forever. You know, there used to be an old adage about how many people you would tell about a good experience versus a bad one. And, right. and people who have bad experiences really want to tell everybody about it. 
which is, yeah, I, it's it's a psychological thing. It really is. You know, it's unfortunate, but if you go in with that mindset and saying, okay, I do realize that. And you know, I'm not going to argue with people online. You don't want to do that. I would always respond. I want to make this right. Why don't we set up a call? Because to have that conversation online could get, uh, it could get ugly. So that is the number one rule. You want to take it offline as soon (laughs) as possible. And the best solution for bad reviews is more good reviews. So you want to have some kind of a program campaign effort to encourage the people who are happy to give you reviews. Yes, absolutely. Um, So we, I know you had wrote a, uh, you wrote a blog article, six steps to deliver a remarkable customer service. Um, Yeah. It's actually a download that I have on my website that people can get for free. Yeah. And, uh, and you're going to get, I have that link. So we're going to provide that in the, uh, in the show notes. Is that, is that something if for just people listening in, is that something you can, you have in front of you or do we just, yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. What, and what is that website? Oh, well, you can go to the how mm. and then go to my resources page. And that's where I have all of my downloads. So the how and then resources. And that's where you'll find all of the downloads. Perfect. So we'll include that. Uh, in the show notes here, and what else did we did we cover everything on there? I didn't I didn't want to. Oh go no, but 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 you know we, we're it's it, it can be a long conversation. There's six steps essentially. The most critical ones are the one that we talked about. It starts at the top. If you're not bought in as the owner and you haven't empowered your staff, your management, if you have that, to why this is important, and and if you're not doing it because it's who you are, then it then it's going to fail. And and so you know keep doing it the way you're doing it. And then the hard part, Giuseppe, is the consistency part. That's the sixth step. How do you execute consistently? And as you pointed out early in this conversation, we're never going to be perfect. But I need to have the bar set high so that we can strive for that perfection. And then as you explained very clearly, deal with the times when we make mistakes as quickly and as honestly and as transparently as you can. But that has to be the focus. And as the owner and your managers, we need to drive that so that it becomes right. part of our culture, not just you know what we talked about as our mission statement last year. It's got to be continuously inculcated in the culture. And then a fascinating thing happens. Your team, even I've had this happen even with hourly wage employees, they will take this on as the mm-hmm. persona of the place. Right. And and it's an amazing and wonderful thing when that happens. Yes. No, that that be- beautifully said. Uh, I, I could not could not agree more. And I encourage everyone to uh to check out the download and the resource page. We'll, we'll include that in the show notes. Um what what else is new on, on, on your end? Um talk to oh, us gosh. a little bit about, you know, maybe yeah. also, you know, what's new and then and then who who you help. So for the for the person listening in. Um, you know, we've had quite a few people call us about franchising, listening to our episodes, uh, but just to reiterate who you help and, um, you know, for that person that maybe has never hired a business coach before. Sure. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I focus on either people who are aspiring to become first time business owners and helping them through that process, similar to how you help them if they're considering a franchise. And I help them through my show, the How a Business podcast that's been on the air since 2016, 400 and something episodes now. And I've had an opportunity to cover most of the topics related to getting ready to start a business. And then what do you do to actually make it launch? So much of it is a mindset issue for a lot of people, I find, Giuseppe. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's two things. There's the reality that I don't have the resources right now. So how do I get there? But the other side of it is the mindset. And what I find is most challenging for people is the fear of the embarrassment of failure. And we, mm. we can talk about that in another episode. But so I help people with that. And then existing small business owners, because we're all looking for ways to grow and improve mm. our business and to hopefully realize that dream for which we got into business ownership to begin with. So I do right. one-on-one coaching programs, the podcast, resources, online programs as well that people can all find at the howabusiness.com. Howbusiness.com. And what about someone's on the fence? They don't know, am I a good candidate? Um, or they have questions on, you know, what, what the normal engagement is, pricing, all that kind of stuff. Where, where do they start? 
as far as uh, hiring a business coach or as start as far as starting a business? As, as far as, you know, if they wanted to reach out to you, feeling that if they're a good fit to, to work. I ah, got it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just like you, I offer a free consultation. So if you go to the howabusiness.com, you'll find on my coaching page, the ability to schedule a free 30 minute consultation with me. Same thing for Giuseppe. That's a great opportunity for us to get to know each other, see if we're a fit, and then we'll talk about how I might be able to help you. Right. Same thing for Giuseppe, you know, because you want to connect with that person first and see if they're a fit. Um, Like you said, we were talking about before we started recording, often what people will do is listen to our shows, which is a great way to get to know, Mm -hmm. not only to learn, but to get to know us if that's where you want to start. And then when you feel comfortable, schedule the call. There's no obligation. There's no credit card. There's nothing like that. We want to work with people that it's a fit both ways, right? And so that would be the next step is to schedule a call. Yep, absolutely. And that's, and you know, when, when people say jokingly, they'll say, not jokingly, but they'll ask, what's your, what's your success rate? And I, and mm-hmm. I, I said, well, it depends how you measure it. Right. And I, and I always say, well, success rate, I, I always gauge as helping you make that maybe not, you know, maybe a franchise wasn't a good fit, but that's, that's I right. think it, I think it's still successful, right? We're it's case by case. It's not um, same thing. Someone contacting you that may not be a good fit for maybe a coaching client. Maybe they're just brand new and they need to get their systems in place. I'm, I'm just using that as an, ex- yeah. as an example. No, but- it's a great point. Neither one of us, when you call us, is at a hard sale. We're not mm. going to force you into our, you know, Giuseppe's not going to force you or trick you into hiring him, even though it doesn't cost anything to be your franchise consultant. He wants to work for people that he can impact at that point in time. It may not be a fit for you, or you may not be at that point yet. You know, for me, often what I get out of the calls is I'm learning about, as you said, what questions my audience has. What right. what other topics do I need to explore? Because as a podcaster, it's hard to we don't we don't know who's listening necessarily. So these calls are really valuable to me in that regard. That to me is a win to just get to talk to people who are about to embark on the adventure of owning a business or are who are looking for ways to grow their business. What, uh, what, what did, it, what, what did we not cover? I'm tongue tied today. Oh what goodness. Are- There's so many topics we haven't covered, but um, you know, I, I think going back to the point that maybe we started with the entrepreneur versus business owner, you know, you helped me with this. A, a franchise is not something that I would typically lean towards, especially if you had asked me like five years ago. And yet, I've just recently become a minority partner and very seriously with your help considered a franchise last quarter. I put a stop on that for for personal reasons as to where I am in my life in a fit. And you were gracious enough to help me through that process. But I do think that once as for first time business owners is different because you probably don't know yet, but Giuseppe will help you with questions to understand what is your personality type? Because I do think we fall on a spectrum whether we know it or not. At one end is that person who they don't want to be told by anybody how to do it. They don't want any input, no guidance. I'm going to make up the rules of this game. I'm going to create everything from scratch. Mm. It's going to be my invention. And then at the other end is someone who says, you know what? I just know that I need a different different lifestyle. I just know that what I've been doing at corporate doesn't work for me anymore. Right. I want something different. I want to build wealth for myself, but I, I need somebody to guide me on that journey. So that's you know the other extreme. What Giuseppe does is helps you identify, if you don't know, where do you fall on that spectrum? Because depending on that, it's not that a franchise may not be a fit, Giuseppe. It's, it's just that you're going to help me with the right type of franchise that might be a fit for me, right? Yep, and that's uh, and that's what we try. So we we always say that there, there there's a process. We work with you, but just like you know, working with Henry, why are we talking today? Um, mm-hmm. You know, what what made it pressing to to speak right now? What change are you looking to make? So exactly, sometimes a franchise is a great fit. Sometimes it just may, it may mean a change in a job position. We've seen that before. Where that's right, that's right. You know, people assume the grass is greener, but I go, okay. Do you you know what's involved in a business? Not not from a textbook, but have you you talked to other business owners? Um, there's a lot involved. There's there's risk involved, franchise or not. So are you comfortable investing a hundred thousand, using money in your in your four hundred one k, and just making it real? And I think. Arming people with information, kind of uh, taking the educator role, 
you know, coach, educator, whatever you want to call it, but educating, killing all these preconceived notions of franchising is all food and millions of dollars. But I think if you educate and that person with the right tools and knowledge, um, you know, can, can make their own decision because ultimately we're, we're there to guide. Uh, just like you with coaching, you can't force someone. You can hold someone no, accountable, no. right? And I think that's where there's huge value is, okay, I have the work, I have the gym downstairs, but I'm not using it right in the basement. How do you know I need that accountability partner to remind me every single day and say, or whatever the every week or whatever, whatever it is set up. Did you work out today? What were your results? You know, how, how can we improve on that? And I, I think there's huge value in that because there's a lot going on. You know, life Absolutely. gets in the way. You got, you got kids, you got school, you had, had my hot, hot water heater explode on me a couple of days ago, you know, stuff happens. So you need that person to kind of keep you on track and to make a decision. Yes is a decision. No is a decision. Maybe is not a decision. You know, right. do you want right. to move forward? Do we want to put things on hold for now? And and while thing, you know, things improve, that's fine. But having, you know, you know, working with Henry, we, talk, we talked about having a clear p- a path. Time isn't right. You know, in many, in many cases, it's financials. I only have, you know, f- f- not, not, not much in savings to put down as a down payment in the, on this business. What's that path? Well, we, we figured out franchise ownership is a good fit, but why don't we talk again in six months when there's a little bit more, or we could talk anytime in between, but six months, that's the plan, the goal to be able to put, double your savings so that you can put that as a down payment. So I think having a clear plan and uh, what am I missing? I think that, that that's pretty much it. Yeah, no, again, and going back to what a consultant or a coach does as well, the accountability is, is a huge part of it. But it's also, I think what we do is we help people ask the right questions ah, right. that they may not know uh, to think about. And so that's what you do very well. And that's what I try to do with my clients is help you ask the right questions because we don't have the answers for you. What, what, what we do is help navigate, like you said, are you on that path and help you make sure you can I- identify that path that's the right path for you individually. Yes, absolutely. So awesome. Well, listen, um, again, Henry, this is this has been often, uh, awesome. Uh, you know, we covered quite a bit here. I encourage everyone to, uh, to download, uh, download the, um, uh, the, the free resources on Henry's website. We'll put all that in the show notes. It's been a pleasure, Henry, as always, uh, catching up and looking forward to uh, to our next show. Thank you, Giuseppe. Thanks for having me back on your show. Thanks. Take care. Thanks.